Hey everybody, final thoughts, time for Assault on Doomrock Ultimate Edition. But before I begin, please keep in mind this is a paid preview. Now with that in mind, let's talk about it because I think this is a very fun, very silly board game that does a really good job of translating the roguelike uh, video game style to a board game. It's, it's a very good roguelike board game. Now if you don't know what a roguelike is, it is a, a style of a video game that uh, is focused on um, short to medium length runs where you are, you know, maybe delving into a dungeon or something like that. And you are a character that often has some random abilities attached to you. You have, you face a lot of uh, random encounters. The items that you can get are, are wildly different from run to run. Um, the abilities that you can get are different. Uh, the enemies that you face are different. And you just have a ton of variety. And the the real draw in these things is getting better at working with that variety to make your experience better and better each time. And then also unlocking, I mean, in video games, unlocking a lot of different characters. Well, with this, all the character types are unlocked from the beginning. There's a ton of different characters that you can play as. And they give you a, an interesting starting setup, you know, you've got your, your character, it'll have a threat number, which determines your uh, spot in the initiative and how uh, likely the enemies are going to attack you. Um, you start with two starting abilities. Um, that's kind of it. And then from there, you can uh, you can customize your character as you go. And you do have a lot of ways to do that, from items to leveling up, uh, you know, getting new abilities. Um, there's epic loot uh, and and you know, getting different like status tokens as well. So one thing that I will say, you know, it's like I said, it's very much a roguelike, and uh, if you love roguelikes, you're gonna find a lot uh, to love here. Uh, if you know how you feel about roguelikes, that should inform your decision. Some people don't quite get along with roguelikes. I prefer a roguelite, things that are, you know, a little less crunchy, and this kind of falls into that. I guess this would be more of a roguelite, um, if you wanna get really technical about it. Uh, but that's that's great for me because that's the kind that I like. I, I don't want to have to fiddle with every like stat block and and everything that you know. Whenever you equip a thing, oh, it it adds to this, but it, it reduces this. And, and no, I I like it uh, something that's accessible, easy to get into. And I think this does a really good job. First off, you know, it it pairs down a lot of. RPG things, things like stats. You know, a lot of uh, games would do six stats because that's how D&D &D does it. This one, no, no, let's do three. Strength, agility, intelligence. Every skill is gonna give you one of those. Some items require it. That's all you really need to know. And then on top of that, you know, uh, when you have that in mind, let's say you get an epic item, like I did, I, I drew this vampiric necklace and needed one agility, one intelligence. So it's like, okay, well, next time I level up, maybe, my uh, rogue who has agility but no intelligence will try and get one of the abilities that gives intelligence. Or maybe the Valkyrie who has intelligence but no agility will try and get an agility uh, power. But then again, maybe that power isn't going to synergize with the other abilities that they already have. So you've got to think about it. But even though there is plenty of randomness, I mean like the this is the ability deck. This thing is huge. There's so many different cards here that one game is com gonna be completely different from the next, which, you know, if you like roguelikes, that's what you're there for. So, even though there's a huge variety of this, it's a lot of RNG in that sense, You, it also mitigates it because it gives you a lot of opportunity to redraw, you know? You, whenever you're drawing skills, and then you can choose any of them to hold on to for a moment, discard the rest, draw back up to three. So, you know, Max, you could see six different cards, and, probably you're gonna find something that's useful. Maybe not exactly what you want, but there's always something that's gonna be decently good. And again, like maybe you see them and think, I might want this one. I'd like to see what else is there. So you can hold onto that one card, throw away the others, draw two more. It's like, yeah, you know what? That one was the best one. I like that. So that I think is a really cool system. And then when you get to combat, I love how how stripped down it is. Again, it reminds me a little bit of uh, Too Many Bones. You know, you've got the system where you know you got these chips that represent the enemies. You know what the stats are because you've got a big uh, character sheet that's telling you, you know, this is how you set up. Oops, this is how you set up the enemies. This is where you put like terrain if you're using terrain. A um, little bit to know how you set up the deck, and then it's just these are all the abilities. You draw a card, you figure out what it's doing. It's really intuitive that way. And so I, I love that. And I also love the the board. It's just, 
things are in groups or they're or they're alone. I mean, it's in a group by itself. They are adjacent to you or they're distant. That's all you need to know. You don't have to worry about like, okay, I can move uh, you know, three spaces here. Um, I provoke an attack of opportunity. No, no, no. It's just, oh, it's distant from me. I can move to it. Oh, I'm I'm surrounded. That means I can't move. I'm you know there's there's more than twice as many uh, enemy units as there are heroes. So we're stuck here. I'm now I need to do melee attacks. It's very simplified in that sense, but that doesn't mean it isn't deep. It there is plenty of depth. Uh, and what really comes through is the depth of building your loadout to optimize your dice because these dice i mean they're just d6s and i'm i was using the the like little custom dice uh module you can also just play with you know regular d6s but it doesn't necessarily it's a tiny little thing that adds adds some stuff to it i like it um if you're for example the rogue i started off with three cards one i could only put ones on it one, I could only put threes on it, and the other one, I could only put sixes on it, which means twos, fours, and fives are almost useless, except that we also start with an, uh, a, a trait card, and these you could put any die on, but you can only put one of uh, one die on them. So, you know, you have options, but a thing that you might want to do when you're, when you're looking at new character cards is, oh, this uses dice that I'm not currently using, uh, that I don't currently have a card for that might increase its value to me over what the actual ability does. Because maybe, this is, I find this other one, it's a really strong ability, only triggers on sixes. I already have an attack that only triggers on sixes. Do I need another one? So that, I think, is a really, a really smart way to do a random draw for new abilities. Gives you a lot of options and gives you a lot to think about when you are, uh, when you're leveling up and when you're building your character. Um, and then, uh, you level up during the adventure phase, going back to the adventure phase. That, I think, is also another thing that's like, it's pared down, it's simplified, but it, it works. You know, there's some locations out, you have a, an amount of time, you go to a place, there's little little blurbs for everyone, and then, you know, that's that's the, the encounter that you're going to get. You, you might go to that cursed swamp, and, and you can roll around in the mud. You might find something good, probably not, but hey, now you're dirty, which makes you stealthy. You blend in. So, so like all kinds of little things like that, I think are, are really smart touches. So this is, I think, really good for, for that kind of experience. Plus, this game plays out in three acts. So if you've got a big group together, you know, you want to play through this, you can play through the whole three act structure if you survive. That's another thing, like a roguelike, if y'all die, that's it, that's the end of the run. Um, so, you know, not great. But if you don't, you make it through, keep going, that's cool. Uh, so you can get them together and play through the whole thing if you want to, or at the end of an act, you can pack it up. There's a whole way to, to save your game and continue it another time. So it's really accessible. Like I said, it's really easy to get into. I think that's a, a very, very big strength of this. Um, it also has a particular sense of humor. Uh, some of the jokes, I really appreciate it. Some of them fell flat. I'm not going to lie. Uh, comedy's hard, you know, and... Uh, this type of humor, I think, will really appeal to to, to some more than others. Um, but for the people who who like it, they're really going to get a kick out of it. There's always there's tons of little jokes just thrown in a, a lot of different places, and 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 sometimes they can be subtle. Like there's one that's just uh, there's a so there's terrain on all the different locations, and one of the terrain is like an evil goat of doom or something like that. And your ability uh, it, it says something like the evil goat stares at you. And one of the abilities is just stare back. And then if you stare back, you get heroism because, you know, you're staring down this evil goat. It's like, okay, it's clever. That's kind of fun. Um, oh, also, uh, there's different, There's like I said, there's a ton of different classes that you can get. And, uh, you know, they have, these cards have different sides for like, uh, this is, you know, the male version. This is the female version. I think that's cool when, when games do that. Um, sometimes it changes the name. Sometimes it changes it in a subtle way, like Rogue for the guy or Rouge uh, for the girl. Um, Sure, uh, for, I was playing the Valkyrie, but the other side is the Viking. Okay, sure, why not? There's one that's Cavalryman, and uh, the other side uh, is Horse. You, you play as a horse, which is a choice. <laughs> um, but the Cavalryman, you think like, oh, that's just the guy riding the horse. No, 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 that is a guy who has an animal on his back and is acting as the Cavalryman. I, 
there's a lot of little silly things, little little jokes that are thrown in here. It's kind of just everywhere. If you, you, you look, you always find little bits of humor uh, speckled in there. So if that's something you like in a game, you're really gonna appreciate it. Um, so yeah, uh, Assault on Doomrock, the Ultimate Edition. Oh, I should also mention, I haven't played the original Assault on Doomrock. I've heard good things about it, um, but that's why I was excited to play this one. And um, I mean, now I don't feel like I need to play the, uh, the original because hey, I like this version, so it works for me. So if you are, if you played the uh, original version, I don't know. And if you watched, if you played the original version and you watched the run through, tell, tell me how it's different. I wish I could tell you, but uh, in this case, I don't quite know. Um, at least not from experience. All I know is I like the way that this one turned out. So if you are looking for a roguelike RPG kind of game, I think you could do a lot worse than uh, than Salt on Doomrock. It's got a really, really uh, innovative, um, stripped down combat system that I really like, and it get, it gives you that roguelike experience uh, that you can get from uh, computer games. But hey, we, do it with some friends. Um, oh, I should also say there's a solo mode. Uh, it is basically, I mean, like you can do the way I did, where you play as two players. But solo mode gives you sort of a dummy player that you can control. It works a little bit differently, but it works really good. So. With all that in mind, for real this time, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, thank you for sticking it to the end. And uh, it, like I said, if you like a roguelike, check out Assault on Doomrock Ultimate Edition. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you folks later. Bye bye